a step-by-step -step guide to the ASTM D3080 direct shear test of soils under consolidated drain conditions. Step 1. Sampling. Gather all the tools needed to trim your 60x60 60 60 mm sample. Shown here are all the tools needed. Place the confining square onto the undisturbed sample or reconstructed soil. Gently press down just enough to hold it in place, less than 1 mm deep. Scrape around the confining square methodically to remove soil, and gently press down on the confining square. Move slowly and carefully when scraping around the sample. Gather some of the trimmings to get a moisture content before the test. Repeat the scraping and trimming. Continue until about half a millimeter of the sample is protruding out of the confining square as shown. Do not try to just cut the sample off when it's in the confining square. Go in with a shallow angle. You would rather have excess soil to cut away than crack the sample or cut into the sample. And having to start over, proceed to carefully remove the sample now inside the confining square. With the sample now at the right lengths, use a metal blade to scrape both ends of the sample until both sides are perfectly flat. Take care when scraping the ends so you don't accidentally create a seal with the clay. Keep both ends rough as shown. Step 2. Shear Box Assembly Gather all the parts of the shear box assembly. Here are the names of the different parts. Place the base plate into the shear box. Place one porous plate on the base plate. Place the gripping plate on the porous plate making sure the grooves are perpendicular to the direction that the assembly will slide. Place the top half of the cell onto the bottom half and align both. The sample should be able to smoothly slide into the shear box assembly. Using the two screws that hold the top and bottom assembly together, screw the assembly down tight. Place the sample still in the confining square into the small groove on the top half. Place the top gripping plate on the sample in the same orientation as the one at the bottom. Gently push the gripping plate down until it is flush with the confining square. Using the 60 by 60 mm wooden sample extruder, slowly push down until the sample is at the bottom of the shear box assembly. Place one porous plate onto the top gripping plate. Place the top cap onto the porous plate. The sample is now ready to be transported to the digishear, direct shear device. Step 3. How to use to force chart. Example, a 50 kPa test the weights you will need should be equal to the pressure you are testing at. The weights needed for a 50 kPa tests are 1.75 kg which is equal to 47.68 kPa on the right side arm, 0.75 kg which is equal to 2.04 kPa on the left side arm, 47.68 kPa plus 2.04 kPa equals 49.72 kPa, which is within 1% of the testing parameters. Don't go over the test limits, rather be slightly under. Step 4. Preparing the test. Place shear box assembly into digishear device. Fill the digishear with distilled water to allow sample to saturate. In the absence of specification potable water may be used. Keep the sample fully submerged in water to saturate the sample until you are ready to test. Depending on the sample's granule size and its clay content, the saturation phase may take up to 24 hours. Sandy samples with little clay usually saturate faster and can be tested after as little as 6 hours. Step 5. Pre-test checks. Place the correct load on the right lever arm. Place the correct load on the left lever arm. Make sure not to lower the weights onto the sample until you are ready to test. Make sure weights are leveled by use of the spirit level. Use the leveling screw to hold the weights up before testing. Make sure that you unscrew the leveling screw just prior to pressing the start button. At the computer open the Datacom app. Right-click on the chart to bring up the menu. Click on Show Readings to check if all measuring devices are working. Make sure that the vertical LVDT has a reading between 2 mm and 5 mm. Make sure that the horizontal LVDT also has a reading between 2 mm and 5 mm. Make sure the force reading is in the positive but not exceeding 10 newton. Back to the shear box. Make sure the two tightening nuts are in contact with the shear box. Step 6. Different shear rates. Sandy and granular soils are tested at a slower rate. 0.005 mm per minute. Cohesive clay soils are tested at a faster rate, 0.0083 mm per minute. Set the device to the correct shear rate. Set the stroke limit to 12 mm. It is worth noting that if you have large granule sizes a gap may be needed by use of the gap screws at this stage. You can find the exact gap sizes by referring to paragraph 6 of the ASTM standard. Do not press start yet. Step 7. Starting the test. When you are ready to start recording your test, right-click on the shear box that you are going to be using and click Start Test. This will bring up the data recording settings. Change the settings to the following if not already done. Polynomial should be ticked. Change the A value to 10 and the B value to 1. Click Start to bring up the location that the data will be saved in. 
Name your test is shown and click OK. Move back to the DigiShear device. It is very important that you make sure that the leveling arm's rest is unscrewed. Make sure both metal screws are moved to the gap screw locations are removed. Start the test by pressing the Enter button on the DigiShear device. Make sure that the data is being recorded by the Datacom app. Watch the graph and note any oddities and at what time. Step 8. Sample Removal After the test has been completed remove the shear box assembly. Very carefully remove the tested sample using the gap screws to assist if needed. Photograph or sketch the failure surface. Determine the sample water content and dry mess. If the sample should break or fall apart, gather all the tested material in a miter box to determine the water content and dry mess. Generally, three or more tests are performed on specimens from one soil sample, each under a different normal load. Example, a 50k PA test is generally followed by a 100k PA test and then a 200k PA test. Other increments can be used as long as each subsequent test is double the normal load than the last. Step 9. Cleaning of equipment. Start by cleaning the lower half as shown and make sure that the holes on the sides are clear of any clay or blockage. Do not use any metal tools to scrape off the clay or silt. Pipe cleaners may be used as shown to aid in clearing up the holes. 1.75mm 3D printer filament also works great. Check to see if the pins that the lower plate rests on are not bent, and that it does not rattle or move when the bottom plate is placed on the pins. Clean the top half as show and make sure that the holes on the sides are not blocked or have any clay buildup. Let the disassembled parts dry out naturally. The porous plates should be boiled into aired water. After the porous plates have been boiled, place the porous plates in the oven for 5 to 10 minutes to fully dry out. 